In my previous video, The Darkest Genre of Rap, I covered Memphis Rap, which is a somewhat dark and eerie genre of music. Even though that was more of an exploratory video, I got a bunch of comments telling me that I should check out Horrorcore. And although I didn't know of Horrorcore, I didn't know too much about it. So in this video, I decided to check it out. So join me today as we look into the most genre of rap. Also, this is my uh, October Halloween video fit. Tried to get somewhat festive, I guess. And this is the first of my two Halloween specials, I guess you could call it. This one's definitely a lot more darker than the next one, but the next one is kind of different, so I guess I wanted to call it a special. So make sure to stay tuned for next week's video. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram, too, because I just I just want more followers. Thank you. So before I tell you about how Horrorcore began and how it grew, it's probably important for me to tell you what it is in the first place. Like the name implies, it's a very dark genre of rap music. It's also an interesting genre because unlike some other fields this is a genre that some artists will dabble in but most of them won't dedicate their entire careers to it the main characteristic that makes horrorcore horrorcore is the lyrics the lyrics tend to be very dark and graphic and they're about cannibalism torture and many more things i don't have enough fingers for all the bad things that it's about there's also many themes of satanism and supernaturalism i don't know if supernaturalism is a word but just think like ghosts and spooky things like the name of the genre suggests horrorcore is heavily based off of horror movies a simple way to think about horrorcore is it's just horror movies in song format these songs are typically not always but typically exaggerated and told in the form of a story the storytelling on these songs is usually really good and that's what makes them so enticing interestingly enough some horrorcore songs back in the day especially were actually used in horror movie soundtracks the other very important characteristic of horrorcore is the instrumental behind the lyrics a lot of the time in horrorcore songs the instrumentals would have much more dark and eerie beats something that has actually still influenced rap to this day a dark instrumental isn't necessary for the song to qualify as horrorcore and a lot of early songs didn't have that but it isn't uncommon either a psycho. i need to be dead took the knife out of my neck and ate the meat out my own head so now that we know a little bit about what horrorcore is in general, let's see how it began. So unlike many other early styles of hip hop, horrorcore didn't just come from one region. Some of the earliest horrorcore artists were from California, New York, Texas, Tennessee, Michigan, and many other places across the United States. Now, there isn't really a clear origin of who started horrorcore or where it began. It's a very highly debated topic, especially because of how vague and subjective of a term it is. Some people point to Gangsta NIP, some point to Esham, and some claim they started it themselves, like this video on YouTube with 700 views. I like to think that I'm a pioneer of horrorcore because I started writing like this in 1985. He seemed like he knew what he was talking about, so maybe he's right, who knows. But in the words of this dude who said Sounds kind of like Filthy Frank. I mean, there's no way to really tell where horrorcore came from. It just kind of happened. However, some people think the seeds that sprouted into horrorcore all began with Jimmy Spicer's song, Adventures of a Super Rhyme in 1980. It was a 14 minute song and in a portion of it, Mr. Super Rhyme himself detailed an experience where he met Dracula. Another pioneer of the genre was Gangsta NIP, who allegedly first performed horrorcore lyrics in 1983. Although he didn't call it horrorcore, he labeled it psycho rap, which is actually a bit scarier sounding to be honest. His first album however was released in 1992. 1988 though is the year that horrorcore really began to take off. Funny enough, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince aka Will Smith were one of the first people to make a horrorcore song. Whether or not they knew it, they contributed to the founding of a new genre. They had a song called Nightmare on My Street where they talked about meeting Freddy Krueger. Another song that really helped kick off horrorcore in 1988 was Assassins by Ghetto Boys. The instrumental of the song wasn't dark at all and neither was the way they talked but the lyrics got pretty rough at some points and they had amazing storytelling. And without the machete, she screamed, I sliced her up until her guts look like spaghetti. Violent J from the Insane Clown Posse claims that this is the first ever horrorcore song. The Ghetto Boys were actually a big driving force in horrorcore, and a fun fact is that Gangsta NIP actually helped write some of their early lyrics. Detroit is also the home to many early horrorcore artists such as Esham. Esham was one of the first artists to help establish horrorcore, even though he labeled his music acid rap, but with lines like, told my teacher I want to be like 
and when I grow up, people are going to label that as something. He dropped his first album in 1989 when he was just 16 years old, and it influenced many artists to come. Even Eminem and Insane Clown Posse, two of the biggest horrorcore artists, cited Esham as an influence. That's insane to think about the fact that he was 16, selling out shows in high school, and influencing some of the biggest rappers to come from Detroit. If you're going to check out any artist from this video, I highly recommend Esham. He has a really cool, unique sound. One of my favorites out of anyone else from this video, so make sure to check him out. Another early influence of horrorcore was insane poetry, but horrorcore began picking up much more in the 90s. While all this was going on across the United States, Memphis had its own dark sound emerging. Memphis rap, also known as Memphis horrorcore, was another important force when it came to the overall genre. It was very influential and it still has a lasting impact to this day. It began in the early 90s right as the rest of the horrorcore genre was taken off. Some popular artists from the scene include Tommy Wright III, 36 Mafia, and many more. Some members of 36 Mafia, like DJ Paul, and Lord Infamous have even cited Gangsta Nip as an influence. Similar to regular horrorcore, it had very dark lyrics, but one of the main differences is that a lot of these artists claim this was real life for them. Aside from the occultism aspects, Tommy Wright said in an interview that a lot of the dark lyrics were inspired by all the bad things happening around these artists. It's not devil worshiping, but it's a lot of evil shit. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of evil spirits, cutthroat city, cutthroat mentality. That's what Mip is about. This contrasts a good chunk of horrorcore, not all of it, but a good chunk because a lot of it is focused on exaggerated storytelling. For example, Will Smith didn't actually meet Freddy Krueger and Jimmy Spicer didn't actually meet Dracula. These are just exaggerated stories for the purpose of entertainment, along with a lot of other horrorcore artists. Another extremely influential aspect of Memphis rap was the production. It was low quality due to the lack of resources, causing more distortion in the beats. They also utilized dark melodies, cowbells, and distortion, something that has lasted to this day. Memphis rappers even sampled sound Sound effects for movie soundtracks. It was extremely influential to horrorcore and the overall sound of rap. Horrorcore as an overall genre really began to pick up in the 90s and the early 2000s. In 1991, KMC released their album, Three Men with the Power of Ten, which is where we saw the first use of the word horrorcore. Some other early important horrorcore artists would include Cool Keith and Brother Lunch Hung. Cool Keith actually claims that he invented the genre, although most of the facts are unfortunately not in his favor. And Brother Lynch Hung is probably one of the darkest and most gruesome artists from this whole scene. He even made up his own subgenre of horrorcore called Rip Gut, which was somehow even darker than regular horrorcore. So you're saying that if someone cooked up some human flesh for you, you'd try it out? Most definitely with some seasoning salt. Grave Diggers is another very important group that was formed in the mid-90s, composed of Prince Paul, Riza, Fruquan, Poetic, and their horror-inspired alter egos. Grave Diggers was one of the most successful, influential, and popular groups from the horrorcore scene. To get an idea of their songs and what they rapped about, they had songs like 1-800's Diary of a Madman, Six Feet Deep, Past the Shovel, and a bunch more tracks like that. Tyler the Creator actually just recently sampled their song Two Cups of Blood for his song Lumberjack. Yo, deadly, deadly, yeah, get ready, here come the style of Wilder than Freddy. If you're looking to get into horrorcore, I actually heavily suggest starting with this group. Their music is very accessible and it still holds up very well to this day. So in specific, I would recommend checking out the album Six Feet Deep. Big L was another very influential and early horrorcore artist. In 1993, he released a song called Devil's Son that was even banned from the radio because of its dark and seemingly satanic lyrics. However, he said that he wrote the song because he was a fan of horror movies and because the stuff he saw in Harlem was scary. So he just put it all together. Some people tried to box Big L in as just a horrorcore artist or maybe a satanist but he said himself that he preferred other styles and just talked about his surroundings some fans consider his album lifestyles of the poor and dangerous to be a horrorcore album and i agree that some songs are dark like on the graveyard where he says too intense i'm infants for 10 cents it's a little bit dark however the entire album isn't that graphic insane clown posse was probably one of the biggest groups to come from the horrorcore scene they were making music since 1989 but they started doing horrorcore in 1992 they did this because their regular stuff wasn't selling and they wanted to be unique maybe the reason nobody's buying dog beats is because we're just doing some of that same old gangster rap like everybody else man we ain't from in la why don't we just get brave and add to this crazy detroit sound what do they mean by that detroit 
quiet sound you may be wondering like i said isham was coming out of detroit and was influencing tons of artists from that area so they decided to hop on the horrorcore wave they reinvented their image and went from inner city posse to insane clown posse icp created a huge community and fan base with the gathering of the juggalos and their very interesting music but probably the biggest horrorcore artist of all time and arguably the most successful rap artist of all time eminem came from detroit and started off making horrorcore music like i said earlier he was inspired by isham and other early horrorcore artists eminem's earlier work like the slim shady lp the marshall mathers lp and some of his work with d12 could be considered horrorcore his infamous song kim is a great example and one of the darkest popular rap songs alongside other songs like remember me which is one of my personal favorites from him I got the soul of every rapper in me love me or hate me my mom's got by the industry and made me and Eminem is known for having a darker and more aggressive style, but it's just crazy to me that he went with that and took it mainstream, especially because of how heavily they were censoring a lot of his music and other horrorcore artists because they're talking about, you know, evil stuff, dark stuff, satanic stuff, and they did not want that on the radio. In general, his music throughout the 2000s and the 2010s was a lot less dark than his early work, so he isn't really considered a horrorcore artist, but he was very huge when he was making horrorcore music and he brought the genre a ton of attention. With that attention, the genre grew and people began began to try to emulate the sound. As horrorcore grew more popular, its influence grew as well. With many songs and artists being banned from the radio because of how dark they are, it's no surprise that they even tried to link horrorcore to real life issues. It is called horrorcore rap, and the controversy over the music is only making it more mainstream. Media outlets began blaming horrorcore artists for violent crimes. They were claiming that the dark and aggressive music was inspiring kids who were easily influenced to do terrible things. In 2005, a high school student who police say was a regular on Mars his website nine people in minnesota in september four people were killed in virginia and the accused a 20 year old horrorcore fan known as psycho sam who used to go to mars's shows in my opinion i know you guys wanted to hear my opinion i think this is pretty dumb because you know horrorcore songs like i said earlier are just horror movies kind of in song form it's just for entertainment storytelling and possibly an outlet for artists if anyone were to take these songs too seriously i think that's on them it's the same way that they could take a horror movie or a horror book too seriously another big issue though with horrorcore is how quickly it became corny throughout the 2010s artists that were inspired by the likes of eminem and other horrorcore artists began to try to emulate that sound but it just didn't work some examples could be hobson or dax who many rap fans view as corny but there are plenty of smaller artists to this day who still try to be extra dark in their songs just to sound like their favorite rap in my opinion, it seems like for a while people were getting tired of the unnecessarily dark music and the overly exaggerated lyrics, so horrorcore began dying down. I think the quote that sums this up perfectly comes from LA Weekly that says, Today, it seems like the only people who don't see horrorcore as a dirty word are its listeners. The last big, and keyword being big, artist to do horrorcore well, in my opinion, was Tyler the Creator, specifically on his albums Bastard and Goblin. And I know, he said that he's not a horrorcore artist, and I agree that he isn't, and maybe some of that music wasn't necessarily horrorcore, but some of it could definitely count. If you've heard either of these albums, I'm sure you could think of a few songs, definitely like Tron Cat, for example, that would fit into this horrorcore box. But other than that, there hasn't been really any fresh, new, creative horrorcore songs or artists to come out. However, there there is a revival of horrorcore going on right now. Some people consider artists like Clipping to have some horrorcore songs. They make very experimental and unique music compared to the traditional horrorcore sound. Other smaller artists that have dabbled in this genre recently would include Dirty, Rejected Reina, and other similar artists from their scene. Dirty in particular made an entire album called Analog Horrorcore with a ton of underground artists. It takes inspiration from horror movies and horrorcore music, but with a new and much more aggressive take on it. A lot of underground artists from this scene, in my opinion tend to make music that seems a lot more like horrorcore but it's a lot different and much more unique than what a lot of people probably associate with the genre of course there are tons of smaller artists out right now trying to reinvent the sound but as of right now horrorcore is not nearly anywhere as popular as it used to be in the 90s and the early 2000s another horrorcore artist that is very interesting is big lurch he actually did some of what he rapped and he even cannibalized someone that he killed but many people actually think that big lurch may have been set up so check out this video to learn more about Lurch's situation. Other than that, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.